New York ain't New York anymore. How I miss those old pals of mine. Who was the greatest Major League Baseball catcher of all time? If the name Lawrence Peter Yogi Berra doesn't spring to mind, have I got the movie for you. Hello, history lovers, and welcome. I'm your host, Dean Carianis, and this is the History Author Show on iHeartRadio. Find me at HistoryAuthor.com or across social media platforms. Plus, you can read my columns in the New York Sun. In this episode, our time machine does go back to the future in more ways than one. This interview with sports journalist Lindsay Barra is really special. She's here to talk about the new documentary about her grandfather's life. He's New York Yankees legend Yogi Berra. The film is called It Ain't Over. And if you watch only one documentary this year, make it this one. For more on Yogi Berra's service in World War II, do check out the event I emceed at the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center in Little Falls, New Jersey. That was conducted in partnership with the Bob Feller Active Valor Foundation and titled Sacrifice and Courage, a Tribute to D-Day. Please do visit our guest at lindsaybarra.com. Let's join Lindsay Barra and you can hear us discuss this fantastic new movie about her grandfather. Look for it in theaters near you. It's called It Ain't Over. Hey, Dean, how are you? Good morning. How are you? Hi. Looks like you're really burning the midnight oil here to try to get all this done, right? It's a nightmare. It's like, it's a nightmare. But it's great. It's great, too. I can say that from the outside. Yeah, no, it is. For me, I just get. (laughs) I I keep telling my boyfriend it's totally awesome, and it's also a nightmare, and the nightmare doesn't take away from the awesomeness, and the awesomeness doesn't take away from the nightmare. Both things are simultaneously true. But in this, we meet this guy who lived this great, American dream life on the baseball field, this American love story. And today people tend to be so depressed and angry and divided. I know it's a cliche, but it, it's really true. You look at those pictures from the from the 50s and the 60s and he just looks like he's having the time of his life. So what you hope people will take away after they watch It Ain't Over to make them maybe have a little smile on their face. I think for me, my main goal with the documentary is to make people remember what a great baseball player grandpa was, because I do believe that at the end of the day, his unbelievable personality and the yogiisms kind of overshadowed what he did on the field. I really think he was the greatest catcher of all time. And we go into so many of the stats in, in the movie, you know, so many people don't even put grandpa on the Yankees Mount Rushmore. They always pick Gary, Ruth, DiMaggio and Mantle. But I love that stat. There's only two people in the history of all of Major League Baseball, not the Yankees, all of baseball with more than 350 home runs and fewer than 500 strikeouts. And it's Grandpa and Joe DiMaggio. And people don't often put him in the same breath with DiMaggio. So I want people to remember what a great baseball player he is, but also that as good as he was on the field, he was an even better human being. And the movie really goes into that. I think what so endeared grandpa to people over the years is that as big of a baseball star as he was, he was always very relatable. He was a first generation Italian immigrant. So many of us are the sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters of immigrants or immigrants ourselves. He was a veteran of the D-Day invasion. He was a machine gunner on an LCSS providing cover fire for our troops going ashore at Omaha Beach. And there's so many of us who are veterans or no veterans or appreciate veterans or who can relate to being a veteran in some way. As you mentioned, he had that beautiful 65-year love affair with my Grammy Carmen, which is incredibly relatable. He was a great grandfather and a great father. In the film, we even go into Dale's struggles with cocaine in the 80s when he was playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And, you know, that's a difficult thing to include. But I think it even further humanizes grandpa because there's nobody out there who can't relate with the lengths a father is willing to go to to help. And in this case, save his son. So I just want people to connect with grandpa on a human level and then just realize that this incredible human being was also a truly incredible baseball player. Somebody 
really easy to overlook. I remember when I was young and I first heard he'd accomplished the 10 World Series, I said, what? Because when you're a little kid, you think of Yogi Bear, of course, yeah. the infamous association, and he just, there were the commercials and you just didn't associate his talent. And it's really unfair to him. And also throughout It Ain't Over, people are continually saying, well, he's not good looking. He doesn't look like a Yankee. He doesn't look like a baseball player. He's a gnome. I think Joe DiMaggio says, oh, he looks like a fire yeah. hydrant. It's not fair. And and looking back at that picture, you know, Joe DiMaggio, Marilyn Monroe aside, that's kind of a mystery. Your grandfather was, was a better looking guy. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's adorable. Big smile, happy. I don't that understand makes you what the heck people were talking about with that. Um, yeah. We just had a story in the New York Times and the writer dug up this thing from Life magazine, which I have screenshot on my phone and I'm going to read to you in case you haven't seen it. Early in his career, a Life magazine article referred to him as knock-kneed and barrel-shaped and likened his running style to that of a fat girl in a tight skirt. And that was all in one sentence. Now, like, fat girl in a tight skirt, and then the one that always burns me is too ugly to be a Yankee. What does that yeah. mean? What does that even mean? And who the hell would write that? Like, I just, I don't even get it. And you look at his pictures yeah. from his wedding day with Grammy Carmen. And again, you're right. That big smile that just lights up his face and you can't help but smile yourself. And how is that ugly? It, it baffles my mind. It, it I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. <laughs> well, and you're, you're of course have a bias, but I agree with everything. And I thought the same thing watching and I thought it, there's a line, I think with if somebody's easygoing and they don't mind being ribbed and maybe you could tease them a little bit and say, you're a gnome, like a gargoyle, whatever. And he just laughs it off. You feel empowered then to do it even more and pick on him. But they do forget about people like yourself that are the family members or people who are looking up to them as idols. And he certainly was a role model in so many ways. And I, I just think that's cruel to have done. And I think the Yogi Bear, which we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll ask you about next, but uh, that whole thing too, it steals his identity. Yeah. It's, it makes him into literally cartoon. a cartoon. And in fact, the Associated Press reports when he dies that uh, Yogi Bear has yeah. died. It's And again, easy to laugh at, but your whole family is in mourning. The entire Yankees nation is in mourning at that time. And it, it reduces him to a character. Yeah. So I bet you hope that this will restore him to three-dimensional status and separate him from the bear. I do for sure. And, and obviously, like, I always have to keep in perspective the fact that grandpa always let all of this stuff just roll right off of his back. You know, he famously said, I, I never saw anyone hit with his face. No matter what they said about him, he was the most self-confident human being on the planet. Like he never for a second questioned his abilities. My uncle Dale tells this great story about asking him what he thought of when the bases were loaded, like late in the game. And he turned it on Dale and asked Dale what he was thinking about. And Dale was like, oh, what's the pitcher going to throw? Don't swing at a bad pitch. Don't hit to this side. Don't do this. Don't do that. And he was, grandpa was like, you think about all that? All I'm thinking is the pitcher's in trouble. He just had the most, <laughs> so much self-awareness. When he would come home from games, he was so able to leave mistakes at the ballpark. I remember complaining when I was a kid about like, you know, if I lost a softball game or a hockey game or something, and he would say to me, you better knock that off and figure out what you did wrong. Because if you lost, it's because you didn't play well enough to win and you better figure it out so you can come back tomorrow and play better. Because if you're still thinking about yesterday, you're not going to be able to perform the next time you're out there. And he was so able to criticize himself and look at what he did wrong and not attach anything to it, only improve from what he figured out wasn't good that day. He, he was just so, so, so confident in himself. Walking to the plate, he knew he was going to get a hit. He knew he was in charge. He knew he had the advantage over the pitcher. And I think that's why he did have the advantage over the pitcher, right? So it's all about attitude and, and, and perspective. And yes, I do hope the public realizes that he was so much more than just a caricature. And, you know, I hope this does a little bit to kind of reclaim his status as a baseball player, I think because he played his last game in 1965 and then made commercials for 50 years after that, it's, it's a little bit of a recency bias. It's what's in the front of people's minds. And I think if we just put some of the other stuff there, that'll go a long way to having them remember him as, as more than just a cartoon, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the museum does that too, which was great. We did that event mm -hmm. there. Uh, that I am seed for the D-Day and for, for veterans. Yeah. And it's a contribution that, again, I hope people will go see 
it ain't over because you really get to meet somebody that if you just know that caricature that we all grew up, I did anyway, I grew up with in the 70s as as a young kid, you're just shocked and you feel as if you're missing out if you don't discover the real Yogi Berra and the wisdom behind a lot of these clips that are in the movie, but elsewhere, which you said in the New York Times, where people just felt empowered to shrug him off, make fun of this little you know, five, seven guy who wasn't, you know, didn't look like whatever they thought a smart person should look like or a good player yeah. should look like. And they made him, and then they would take his quotes and they would laugh them off. Well, some of the people who've made fun of your grandfather, I'd like to see them have something that's as pithy and wise as it ain't over till it's over. Or, I know. You know some of the many other I, things. I just he said. think the people the people who laugh them off are literally not smart enough to understand what he's yeah. saying. Grandpa yeah. just had this beautiful, simple, black and white way of looking at the world. And he was so able to cut through the crap and call a spade a spade. There's that saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. Grandpa always saw the forest and he saw all the trees. Like he was just able to take it all in and give you the simplest answer, the simplest explanation for something. And when we were kids or even when I was not a kid, he passed away when I was 39, I was t- you know, in my thirties, whatever, you'd ask him for advice about something. And he was the best person to ask for advice because he could give you such a direct and simple answer for whatever the problem was. But it was also, you were rolling the dice because he always knew the right thing to do, but the right thing to do is not always the easy thing to do. So he would tell you what to do and you'd be like, oh shit, he's totally right. I have to do that. And it's going to suck. Right? Yeah. Like it was just the way he saw the world. You know, I was like, talk about people say he was a great bad ball hitter. And grandpa always said that the pitches all looked good to him. He just had this way of making lemonade out of lemons, right? Your life is what you make of it. And I think that also comes from D-Day, from 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 his participation in the war, from literally facing death. He was on that rocket boat for 10 days with stuff exploding around him and pulling the bodies of his fallen comrades out of the water. You don't come out of that experience without a changed perspective on life. They talk about practicing gratitude today. I don't think grandpa ever had to do that. He was profoundly grateful every moment of his life after D-Day for the fact that he came home when other people did not. And he ends up playing a little kid's game for a living. And you can't but approach that with an incredibly profound sense of joy. And if you don't, you're missing the boat, right? And so many of us do. And I feel like the movie can just give people a lot of perspective on life. And I remember at our premiere in Tribeca, someone came up to Sean Mullen, our director, and told him that the movie had inspired him to be nicer to his wife. And we were all like, (laughs) oh my God, what's going on in that house? But like, honestly, if the movie just inspires you to look at your life and do one thing a little bit better, that's grandpa's legacy. And that's tremendous. Somebody that was so nice and so wise, and I can see... I didn't have any grandfathers. I didn't have either of them. They passed away. But I could see that being frustrated, especially when you're young, but even as adults where you want to go to somebody and you want them just to commiserate and talk about a bunch of other stuff that you could distract yourself with before getting down to business. And I love that so many of his quotes really are like that, where you, as you said, you know, the people who think they're so smart laugh it off as just a malapropism in the beginning, and they don't yeah. reflect on the deeper meaning. When Sean brought in that woman, Vicki Janice, I think her name was, and she, the PhD, I was like, what are we doing with this lady? And I loved her interview so much when she says that he doesn't use the words you expect him to use, but the truth is in him, not in his words. And if you can't look past that, then you know, I don't, I can't help you. <laughs> yeah. It makes you think so much deeper at that. That's what gets your attention. No. Great. Mickey Mantle. Can we name one quote that the guy did or Babe Ruth? A lot of these guys, they were great on the field, not to take anything away from yeah. them, but uh, plenty of politicians have lines written them for, for other people that don't, a whole career body of work doesn't have the little wisdom that you have here in it ain't over. So I, I hope that it erases some of those myths. It was really I'm glad great. You liked it. I love it. I did. I watched it. I loved it. I I'm impressed. How did they edit I, everything honestly, down? Honestly, full credit to Sean. He could have made a 10 part docu series, but Sean Mullen, our director, it, putting Grandpa's amazing 90 years on planet Earth into 98 minutes was an incredibly difficult task, and we had to make some hard choices. You know, I mean, Phil Rizzuto was barely in the movie. Whitey Ford is barely in the movie. He gets fired by the Yankees in 85 and we really don't see anything until 99. So his whole time with the Astros is not in the movie. There's a lot of stuff that didn't make it. 
But we think that what we did get in there, you know, gives a really nice picture of grandpa's life and, you know, what he meant here in his time on the planet. So it was tough, though. I mean, it definitely could have been much longer. And we are hoping we had so many interviews that were like between 45 and 90 minutes long. And those people are in the movie for like 45 seconds, if that. And yeah. we are going to try to do a podcast maybe over the summer, get it together where we take like Tony Kubek's hour long interview and pull out 10 awesome stories. And Sean and I will kind of tee up the stories. And because I really want that stuff archived in some way because their voices deserve to be heard. We, we should Definitely. have that stuff out there somewhere in a little bit more of its entirety. So hopefully we can do that because the documentary is only 98 minutes. And so many people in there too. Was I started writing down the names of the people? I thought, oh, maybe there's going to be eight, and I might want to list them. But there were so many. So <laughs> then I said, "That's incredible." And if you, uh, thank you for bringing it to life for me. Thank for and for so many people who watch it have that same experience I did as a kid, where you say ten World Series rings, and you know, he, he might as well have been I the know. Bat Boy in the myth of that period. And it's so unfair. So I'm, I'm glad you're doing this. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be proud. And my favorite part is because you know I'm New Jersey. I'm Greek. Also, as you said, son of immigrants, all that. And from New Jersey, like we have no chance to hold in our, our emotions <laughs> when we see something like him being snubbed at that 2015 All-Star that game. And I just love the image yeah, of him just being like, well, you know, this is it. He's much calmer than you. I thought yeah. that was <laughs> But I'm glad that you were upset. You should have been. I keep telling people this. People keep saying, oh, do you really think he was overlooked? And have you heard me tell this Yadi Molina thing? Last no. year, we premiered at Tribeca in June and in the middle of May, right before Tribeca, the movie was already closed. We, I wish we could have put this in there. Yadier Molina got his thousandth RBI in the middle of May and grandpa loved Yadi, St. Louis sports fan through and through, watched a ton of Cardinals games, thought Yadi was the best catcher in baseball for like 10 straight years. I did a cover story on Yadi when I was at ESPN magazine. So this is no knock on Yadi. We all love Yadi. I click on the story to see the circumstances of the thousandth RBI and the headline is Molina joins elite company and the composite photograph at the top is Yadi Molina, Pud Rodriguez and Johnny Bench who all have a thousand RBIs, but grandpa has 1,430, which is the record by a catcher that will no way, no how never be broken. And he literally wasn't in the picture. I mean, that's ridiculous right and all you have to do yeah. with that is google catchers with a thousand rbis and he pops it's not it's not like you have to delve into the stats to figure that one out that he has more than all of those guys and i guess my hope is the documentary will figuratively put him back in the picture in the conversation as the greatest catcher of all time well, it's great you were able to do it. And I know I keep saying great, but it's true because I read something yesterday that was very similar. And they said, well, it was about Jonestown. And they said, well, with 1978 being far out of uh, anybody's memory that they experienced it. And I'm saying, okay, it's not that long ago, the 70s. Like I was alive. I was only a, a little kid. But I mean, the idea that if it didn't happen in the last 10 minutes, and there's less excuse than ever now with Google available and the internet and old newspaper archives, it's all at your fingertips. Yeah. It's, a, it's just a lack of excellence. And they're in, in everything I find. I'm very frustrated. I know, it's it. horrible. But this, this had so much excellence. One thing I'll it. say about the archival footage in this, when you see grandpa, who is five foot eight and 192 pounds, he used a 34 inch, 35 ounce bat. And you see him, he would warm up with two of them. And then there's a couple of clips where he tosses one to the bat boy and picks up the other big bat and gets in the batter's mm -hmm. box. When you see him manipulate that tree trunk, through the strike zone and slap stuff the other way or drive a ball down the right field line. I mean, it is ridiculous the way he was able to control the barrel of the bat and use those meat hook hands of his to do whatever he wanted with the baseball. And it really comes through in that in the footage. You can really see just how strong and how quick he was. And I'm excited for current baseball fans to see that footage and just put an image to the name Yogi Berra so they have something to recall in their mind when they're talking about him because you know a lot of a lot of that stuff maybe isn't so readily available on the internet yeah well I mean for journalists there's no excuse but I know exactly yeah. what you mean put a different image than just those ads and well what are you going to do the guy had a 90 year life so it's up to you so this is your it's part of your journey in life I guess is to introduce us and it's not just because he's your grandfather it's because he's a national treasure everybody should know he's part of America and to not have the chance and it's some some kid that's out there struggling with 
being made fun of or being short or being told you can't play the game or you don't look like this or that. Like he has the power to to yeah. change lives. So I'm I'm so glad you're doing this. And as I said, any little part that I can play in helping. Uh, I appreciate I'm happy that. Thank you. I'm yeah. glad you got to see it. Oh yeah, it was great. Go see it I, again like on the did you watch the screener? No, I, I did watch the screener. Yeah, okay. but go I want to go see it again see it on the big screen. It's it's yeah. it's really cool. It's I mean I've seen it like fifty times now, but like yeah. it's definitely better on the big screen than it is uh, yeah. on your little laptop. I bet. And do the yeah. Well, I had I had it just to projected it to the TV. But you're right. Yeah. Also, without my name on there, nobody needs to see all those uh, vowels on the, <laughs> yeah, on the screen. I also used to love that you used to go to the Devils games. So that that was cool. I know so fun. He loved his hockey. <laughs> Sports was great. Minor league team too, was it? Was it the Bears in uh, Newark? Was that the or no? It was a the Montclair team, right? Was that the, uh, the New Jersey Jackals? The Newark yeah, Grandpa yeah, yeah. played for the Newark Bears. You know that? Okay, I knew there was some right. connection. Grandpa yeah. Grandpa played in the 1946 season with the Newark Bears. Doctor Bobby Brown was his roommate there, and they played Jackie Robinson's Montreal Royals in the postseason that year. So he met Jackie when he was playing in Newark. And uh, and Bobby Brown's in the uh, in the documentary he too. Is, he was he was one of the people I really wanted to get because he was yeah. like ninety five at the time. I could I I made sure yeah. the first one we did was first yeah. interview we did was Vin Scully because I didn't want Vin had seen Grandpa's whole career and um, yeah. Roger Angel was really important to me too because he started covering the Yankees literally when he got out of the war, so forty six and he was a hundred when we interviewed him. So that's pretty incredible. Yeah. If you talk to somebody and they're 95 and they give you 90 minutes of their time, then you're like, oh my gosh, and I'm going to use three quotes or one quote from them. It's yeah. hard. So I, I, that's great. You'll be able to put it out there because I, I'll Yeah, I'll be we will. That's our project yeah. for the summer. We, I mean, we've yeah. had no time to like, sure. you know, even yeah. brush our teeth lately, but we're going to get it. We'll yeah. get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you so much. Again, the movie is... It Ain't Over. It opens in over 100 theaters across the New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Tri-State area on May 12, 2023, and then it'll expand to markets all over the country. May 12th, by the way, would have been Yogi Berra's 98th birthday. If you can, absolutely go see this movie, as Lindsay said, on the big screen. Don't wait to find it on streaming media. You really want to be able to see, especially with some of this archival footage, the detail, and you can't get that at home. You can't get it if you're being distracted, although this documentary will really hold your interest. So do yourself a favor. Take somebody. Maybe you have somebody you're fighting with out there. You're having a strained relationship. Maybe you know they have a problem that they're not comfortable talking about. Maybe you just notice they have a case of the blues, and it's not the Yankee blues. Say, hey, why don't we go take in a movie? There's this great movie. I defy anyone to come out of this movie without a smile on their face. And it's something I didn't mention to Lindsay, which is every single person that talks about her grandfather begins to smile. That is a superpower. Please do visit our guest at lindsaybarra.com. And remember, you can find the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center online at yogibarramuseum.com. Plan your visit there if you're anywhere in the greater New York area. That's in Little Falls, New Jersey. Plus, remember, you can watch the video of that event I emceed at the library last summer. It was called Sacrifice and Courage, a tribute to D-Day. If you enjoyed this conversation, please do subscribe for future journeys in the Wayback Machine. Remember to check me out on social media and in those archives at HistoryAuthor.com. Well over 250 interviews with authors you're sure to enjoy. Plenty of baseball stuff there, too, if you're a baseball fan. That's it for this installment of the History Author Show. I hope you'll join us for our next all-new interview right here on iHeartRadio or wherever you enjoyed this journey into yesterday. Until that next trip into the past together, on behalf of Lindsay Barra, thanks so much for time traveling with us today. And have a great week. We still call it Broadway, but what's in a name? Take it from Georgie, it isn't the same. On the east side, west side, things ain't like before. There are tears in the eyes of the regular 